State with Brown, and we'll get into the rest of this lineup in a second. When they get on base, they will be aggressive. They'll be aggressive at the plate, as we're seeing with Brown swinging on the first pitch. Walks. They're going to swing the bats and try to impose their will offensively. Brown lays down a really nice punt down the first baseline, and just like that, the leadoff man gets on. Right back up the middle, and a base hit for Womack. Ball gets away from center fielder Worrell initially. And Brown is going to make his way to third. So a mistake out in center field. First and third for the Spartans with nobody out to start this game. This the ball. Put the ball in play. Put pressure on defenses. This could be two. Over to second for one. Hosley beats it out, but he's going to drive in a run. And Norfolk State takes the early lead here in the top of the first. Aggressive in the batter's box. Doing your job. Defense is back. Puts it in a place. That the second baseman playing a little bit further over towards second. So not an easy double play turn. And again, good speed up. Wizen Hunt deals and gets Velasquez looking. Throw down to second. Irrelevant to end this top half of the first inning. But the seventh in batting average. Sends this one to right field. That's going to be at least one. Cut off by Ty Hanshi. And he'll hold Norby to a leadoff single. Again, Norby getting him caught stealing because. This time, Worrell waits for the official call from home plate umpire. And he does get the pass. So first and second now with two. Talented, if not the most talented freshman I've ever been around. To second base. Womack goes over to cut it off. Can he throw him out? Throw gets away from Velasquez. That'll bring Norby home. And then the throw gets away from third base. Here comes Worrell. He'll score. Spartans throwing it around the yard a bit here. And the Pirates take advantage. Get a couple of runs to take the lead. Well, what worked for the Spartans in the top half of the inning. Put the ball in play. See what can happen. Not a bad play by Womack at second base. Actually had a chance, even with the throw down in the dirt. Had a chance to get the runner. First baseman Velasquez couldn't make it happen. And then great base running by Norby scores. And one of the cardinal mistakes in baseball. Don't make one mistake, two mistakes. Off the end of the bat, little number to first base. Velasquez will take it himself. Eat Starling to the bag. Count 3 0. Manchi sends this one up the middle for a base hit. That's every single inning for Norfolk State. They've gotten the leadoff man on board. Runner going, and man, hitting them where they ain't has been the topic du jour in this game. Velasquez doing a nice job. Go Sends it to left field over the third baseman's head. One run will score. First and third again. And Norfolk State has even this one up at two apiece. Three consecutive hits by Norfolk State in this inning. And Council made him pay another fastball. His first at bat, he drove it out into right field. Same type of line drive on a fastball over the plate. This one, a little bit on the outside part of the plate. He punches it out to left field and scoring the tying run. Excellent job of hitting by Jacob Council. On this game, one two pitch to Sims. Got him. And a throw over to second base. And they've got Council in a rundown. Council gets tagged out. Now they'll come home. Velasquez scored. So the rundown by Council preoccupied the Pirates long enough for Velasquez, who has deceptive speed to score from third, and the Norfolk State Spartans have taken the lead. Well, this play all starts with a nasty curveball from Wisenhunt. As you can see, the pickle with Giles running down Council. Now, I think Giles got rid of the ball a little bit too quickly. And anytime you can make the between first and second, the defense 
throw the ball twice with a guy on third base right here. Run him all the way back, run him all the way back. And if you run him back, if you're Giles and you're running back, we get Velasquez there because they had that extra throw and opened the door for the run to score. Chopper up the middle, nice play by Norby to get Collins to end the inning. But the game one. Francisco takes ball four, so the leadoff man on board for ECU. Drives this one to left center field. This one's going back. It's going to be over Sims' head, off the top of the wall. Francisco scores. And Moylan ends up with a stand-up double to even up this game. Strike three. And she now up 3-0 in the count. Takes ball four high on four straight pitches. Hanshi Han reaches. The shortstop's head. Right over the first baseman's head. Into right field. And it'll be first and third. Now we get a timeout. And they're going to call a balk. Now we'll have to see this one in replay because it looked like Hanshi was trying to steal home. Wilson came home with it in home plate umpire. Jeff Hendricks calls a balk. So Hanshi scores. And then over to third goes Velasquez. Take another look. So that was a quick argument by, by Cliff Godwin, the coach. And you can see Wilson never came set. So you have two options. You can bring the pitch home or step back and throw it to get the runner at home. It's a little too quick. You'd say, you know what? This is what we do. <laughs> this is how we are successful. As you're drawing an opening walk of the sixth inning. As Deloach, you get a lefty lefty matchup. There you go. Well off the plate. Norby walk. To right field. And well hit. To the wall. It's gone. Francisco's 13th of the year. Propels the Pirates to the lead. James DeLoach goes to the well one too many times with that sweeping curveball. As you mentioned, had first base open, but opted to roll the dice. And you can see the curveball right over the heart of the plate on the inside part, belt high, and belted out to right field. Francisco with his 13th home run of the season, 47th RBI. Work in on the hands of right-handed batters with that fastball. Agnos, though, puts a charge into this one to center field. To the wall and off it. Sims is going to come and cut it off, and Agnos is going to find his way to third base with a triple. Johnson takes outside, draws the two-out walk. Strike out six walks. That gets away from Collins. And Agnos is going to score from third. Nice curveball by Manzer. Falls up to hit here in the bottom half of the eighth. And he gets plunked right away, so the leadoff man on board for ECU. And we get the scouting reports for the regionals, and we get to see it's a perfectly placed bunt down. And it forces a defensive line. play, which is an error, and it's going to score a run.
Zach well, Agnos has seen, Zach... threatening with the bunt, right? All game long. Like, <laughs> he's he's going to pull him down. <laughs> <laughs> You're exactly right. Read my mind. We've been talking about it all afternoon, squaring around. And you wonder, the three hole, would he really drop down a bunt? Maybe that bun rolls foul, but can't knock Collins for fielding it and trying to get a strike thrown to first base. We may get catcher interference on this play. Yeah. Umpire, home plate umpire, Jeff Hendricks. They have goals for this year, as you mentioned, but over the next two years, it's going to be fun. It's a straightaway center field and a nice play by Brown. Well, he might be getting used to this ballpark. Fights in the batter's box. And he fought for a walk here, was behind in the count. And to lead off this ninth inning with... Chopper to short, going to be a tough play, can't be made. Norby does a nice job of backing up, but it'll be first and third as Hong gets on with a base hit. And Brown does just that. They're loaded. To center field. This one's going to get down for a base hit. One run will score. To left field. Long run. Makarevich is going to make the catch to end game one at ECU.